welcome to Paps. I am your host, J.O. Benjamin, and I am so honored to be here with our special guest, Ronald Wink, what up? <laughs> <laughs> a talent manager, agent, leading everything in the industry right now. How you feeling today? I'm, I'm feeling great, and thank you for that amazing introduction. <laughs> what? Feeling great? Feeling yeah, good? Absolutely. Feeling amazing. Feeling amazing, feeling great, feeling, good. You know, just happy to be here. Happy to be a part of this, yeah, for sure. And we are excited to have you a part of our path. <laughs> mm. So let's hop right into it. Let's just start from the beginning. Where are you from? Uh, I, I was born in Hawaii. Um, I, I, I lead with that now because, right. you know, a lot of people don't realize that you can actually be born in Hawaii and Hawaii is a part of the United States. But yeah, I was born in Hawaii. My father was in the military service. And then immediately after that, we moved uh, back to where my family actually is from, which is Queens, New York. OK, So that's what I represent. So you from New York. So what brings you from New York all the way down here to the dirty South Atlanta? Look at you. <laughs> So I'm still in New York, but I do go back and forth. Um, there are a few clients that I have out here um, that I hold with high regard. And so often enough, I am here trying to help them uh, or probably push in in some form or fashion or support them in whatever it is that they have going on. Yeah. yeah. And then I also have family here. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of my network is here. So this is one of my homes as well. Oh, OK. We're hoping mm -hmm. to be the first. And yeah. the only. <laughs> so I did a little bit of digging and a little birdie tells me mm -hmm. that um, you actually started in front of the camera doing some lead roles like theater. So like I, I need to know how that would happen there. Wow. <laughs> Interesting that you bring that up. I, I've never, whew, never really talked about that before. Um, so as a child, probably around six, seven um, years old, I, I was a part of a theater company called the Black Spectrum Theater yeah. in Queens, New York. Uh, it's in Roy Wilkins Park. And um, yeah, I was one of the uh, lead actors at the time. You know, I didn't, I didn't know that it was a, uh, how, how much or how well I was doing at the time with it. But um, yeah, I was doing pretty well. I have um, lead actor in many of the folktale stories that we used to tell, a lot of the, you know, different productions that we've had. We might have had about four throughout the year. And, yeah. you know, I'd be that lead guy. Yeah. You know, and um, I took on a commercial here and there. Um, but that was really the extent of it. That was the extent of it. I, I think I got caught up in the idea that, you know, you're living in Queens, New York, in an urban area. And that's just not, wasn't a cool thing, you know. And I got home after performing and doing, you know, whatever it is that I do when I'm in theater, the, um, you know, my friends were all like football guys, basketball, baseball. And so you get home, they're talking about that stuff. It's like, you know, hey, I just came out, I just got off stage and then on that end, they're like, yeah, but we just got finished scoring touchdowns. What are you talking about? So eventually I stopped. I, yeah. I cowered to the, um, to the indirect peer pressure. And, and so I shifted at that time, but it eventually came back. So what was one of those driving factors that made you go from being in front of the camera to behind the camera? <sighs> Reality. <laughs> <laughs> reality, you know? And also, but it was, it was a good reality because um, it was through someone that I, I supported a lot. So a, a good buddy of mine, Tobias Trevelyan, who actually is one of my clients now, and he's actually my first, you know, my first client and probably the catalyst for the Talent Connect. Oh, wow. Um, him and I have been friends since high school. High uh, we played, school? Oh, yeah. We played football okay, together. Okay, students. Look to your left, look to your right. <laughs> left. Maybe one of them. Right. Crisscross, <laughs> up, down. You never know. Um, you know, we've connected uh, as brothers, really, um, you know, in high school. And ever since then, we've been really connected. You know, we played football. I, I played, if you know anything about football, if you know anything about football, you know, we were on defense. And uh, I was the strong side cornerback. He was the left side. He was the right side. And, um, yeah, and so we, from that point forward, we were just really close. Um, I had no idea that he was going to go into um, entertainment or acting or anything like that. He actually initially started as a model. Um, but at that time, when I was in high school, I... I had nothing to do with the arts. I just still appreciated it, but I just never, I, I got back into it in college. And, you know, that's another conversation we can have. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but when I met him, you know, we, we really hit it off. And then eventually I went to college for about a year. Him and I had uh, disconnected. And then um, another friend 
of his, him, and myself. Uh, I'm sorry, mutual friend. Yeah. We actually, um, he was rolling video footage of me acting on set or, you know, doing something in particular, Tobias saw it and he was like, oh, that's my boy from back in the day. I didn't know he act. And then him and I reconnected. And then from that point forward, we said, um, when we reconnected that we were going to, uh, together, you know, take this industry by storm. Yeah. And so at that time I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. So I, I, I got back into the acting. I got back into, you know, going into auditions. At that time it was called Go Sees. You know, uh, the industry is much different than the way it was back then in the 90s where, you know, breakdowns, uh, the breakdown services and actors access really didn't exist the way it does now. Yeah. Everything is electronic. Um, back then, you know, you had to go into offices, you know, you had to walk around with your hard copy <laughs> pictures and all that crazy stuff. Um, but getting back to how I transitioned back into it. Um, that was really one of the ways that I, I got back into acting as a, um, sorry, got into the industry, got back into the industry as an actor. And then what was happening was both Tobias and I, we would go on these auditions and, you know, most of the time he was more successful than me and probably most of the other people that were around <laughs> us. So, you know, over time, you know, what ended up happening, we would go into a lot of events and a lot of his productions together because we still support each other. And because he was probably the talent that we were there for and I was just kind of there supporting him, um, I kind of fell into this other space of, all right, let me support my boy. Yeah. You know, uh, at that time we didn't have agents, we didn't have managers. And so it was kind of like we were just out there on our own, bumping off trying, the to, walls, it. trying to figure it out. <laughs> so I started off as just kind of supporting him. Then eventually I, I ventured into, uh, you know, assisting and then probably be a part of being a part of his emails, email chains. Uh, he eventually got a talent agent, um, you know, and so I, I would watch all of that stuff going on. And I would also be a part of the email chains that would go out mm -hmm. and, and, and that would really detail what the business was about. Um, and so I started picking those things up and then eventually um, he had to uh, leave his agent. And so I kind of, you know, kind of stepped in a little bit and started sending out emails for him. And then we actually saw some traction yeah. and didn't realize that we can actually do this on our own. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, I started to take it a little bit more seriously. Yeah. Um, reached out to some mentors. Um, I, at that time, uh, I got my, you know, at the time I created the, an LLC. Uh, at the time it was Talent Connect itself. And uh, because I didn't want to continue to send out emails in my email saying like, big wink 2000 <laughs> <laughs> at Yahoo, you know what I'm Jumping saying? This to, to network studio, yeah. network studio. So yeah. for me it was, you know, how do I, how do I legitimize this thing? Yeah. You know, how do I legitimize what we're doing where, um, you know, I can uh, play a role in helping to push his career forward. I don't necessarily have to be an actor. I, I didn't, I wasn't as strong enough, you know, to yeah. deal with the idea that I went through all this hard work, waited on those long lines of 300 and plus uh, people to get in and, you know, they loved me or they did it. It was like, you know, I was this product. And for me at that time, I just wasn't strong enough. I couldn't understand it. Yeah. I wasn't that connected with myself at that point. Right. And so I, I, I made that transition um, uh, also because I had other things going on where it was like I, I could not continue to go on the go sees or the auditions at the time. So eventually, you know, I just kind of fell into the space of talent manager. Well, uh, supporter. I uh, didn't really become a talent manager until I really understood the game much more. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't want to call myself that. It was just more I was just kind of you know, helping to coordinate, helping to package, helping to do PR, helping, you know, when you do those things, you start to learn the different aspects of the business. You know, uh, I already knew what it was to be a hard working actor and, <laughs> and going through the pain, right? Um, then there's the whole PR piece, then there's the training piece, then there's the business side, understanding uh, really the etiquette of the game, because there's really no rules yeah. out there, you know? And so, so yeah, so I just kind of fell into that space. And after we did the, um, uh, he did a few um, movies uh, and he landed, I think, um, was it Empire, Fox Empire, right? Yeah, he was D major on Empire, <laughs> you know, which was a huge deal. But even before that, I think he got his first lead role 
in a production here in Atlanta. What? Yeah, in a production here in Atlanta. <laughs> That's what we do, baby. Oh yeah, do. oh yeah, oh yeah. Matter of <laughs> fact, um, uh, Kimberly Jones, who most people know her now as a um, you know, an activist, you know, out there on the front lines that's, you know, helping to address the, um, you know, the brutality and, 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 and all the crazy stuff that's going on when it comes to policing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. She was actually, believe it or not, she's super talented. She was the production uh, coordinator. She was the person that pretty, pretty much put everything together. And uh, she hired Tobias and her and I started to communicate. And um, actually, which interestingly enough, um, and I'm, I'm rambling, just jump in whenever you need to. Oh, yeah, I yeah. got a lot of questions probably. <laughs> I'll say this real quick. That's actually how, that's, that's what led me into some other talent. Uh, one in particular, uh, Terrell Hill, who also was on the same project as Tobias. And so um, there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of steps along the way that kind of helped me um, shift from actor to supporter, to, um, you know, coordinator, to, uh, you know, then eventually, you know, manager. Manager. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm sure. like, what? I, you dropped so many gems and mm -hmm. I want to make sure the students are definitely sure. tuned sure. in. Yes. I mean, one that I, I caught in particular was like, hey, you realized that you were needed in this particular space yes. and you did enough self-reflection to realize like, hey, I, I might not have been in tune with myself enough for this opportunity, but I still maintain the relationships to learn the business, right? You, were, you weren't the person responding to the emails, but you were CC and that, uh, that exposure or that awareness, right, into what was going on, you took it upon yourself to be a student. Correct. Learn how emails were sent, who people are contacting, and it was like on the job training, right? No one's paying you for, I'm assuming, no one was paying you to like, you know, be on those emails and be a part. And then when the opportunity came up, right, he changed, he's changing management, your friend, your friend, change your mentor, you're like, hey, I think I can, you know, I think I can do this or I can right. help and I can be in that supportive role. Yeah, yeah, the, the truth is there really, there is no program. That, yeah. You know, it's not like you can go to college and, and I'm gonna get a BA in talent management. That doesn't exist, at least not now. It probably would be something that comes up eventually. Uh, usually people that you find in talent manager, management are folks that actually are extremely, um, uh, knowledgeable of the business yeah. and they come from one of the particular realms maybe a talent agent um uh they they're probably a producer you know they could be um an actor who has a lot of experience you know at the end of the day you know somewhere along the line you're held with some esteem of understanding the game yeah and so i, w I was fortunate to uh learn <laughs> on the career of tobias but not only that um I really did connect with a lot of amazing people that served as mentors. Yeah. Um, you know, I've also uh, engaged myself in one of the Columbia business programs, you know, online and picked up some stuff there, you know. And so, you have your master's. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have a master's. It's it's actually an education. Education, though. Yeah, yeah. we'll talk about that, too. That's a whole other thing. I would love to go there because the truth is there are no limits. Yeah. You know, there are no limits. And... You know, what I've learned was I have to pay attention to my journey. Yeah. I have to pay attention to the things that continue to come my way, the things yeah. that um, that come naturally. Yeah. And education um, happened to be, it's, it's a very ironic thing because I wasn't always the kid that did well in class. Yeah. You know, I was never, ever a kid who was able to stay focused. Yeah. You know, I think when I was a, hey, listen, I was born in Hawaii. <laughs> uh, right then I moved to Queens New York yeah. but even when I was in Queens New York probably the first six years of my life I moved like four or five different times yeah so if you can imagine actually first nine years so if you can imagine I probably went to about three or four different elementary schools having to you introduce know. yourself right multiple times, multiple and times. I'm sure it's past but not only that the curriculum you know they're, they're yeah. teaching curriculum but it's all coming from different places yeah you know so um, you might be learning about addition in one in, in the beginning of second grade in one school and then in the beginning of second grade in another school you're learning about subtraction so if you're switching over you know you either get a double <laughs> knowledge in one thing and completely miss something else yep. or you're just like throwing off so my educational path was very interesting um, because I wasn't the greatest student however um, 
there were a lot of foreshadows in my life. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I'll reference what I mean when I talk about foreshadows. If you're an English or a literary person, you understand that a foreshadow is something that happens significantly yeah. earlier in your life or earlier in the passage or story and eventually comes back and you understand what it meant. Yeah. And so over time, I've learned to pay attention to some of those things. So I wasn't the greatest student. However, um, you know, I was always fascinated with the idea of helping people. You know, I was always fascinated with the idea of education and working in education, um, not because of uh, the books, really, but because I like the fact that you can work and get weekends off, you know, get out of school at three o'clock, have summers off. <laughs> I'm keeping it real. Those are the things that kind of sold me at that time. Yeah. But I also was a kid or a person I loved to help. Yeah. I've always been. That's always been my thing. I even remember <laughs> uh, second grade. No, that's too far back. Probably like, <laughs> I think like fifth grade, um, end of the school year, they were throwing out, you know, book programs um, and they were sitting out because, you know, everything is online now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, they had like actual books and catalog catalogs and stuff. Me and my boy, uh, uh, Mudbone, that's how, we all got interesting nicknames. Yeah, but, we got to dive into Wink Yeah, later. we'll dive into Wink in a second. <laughs> but Mudbone is Devon Fan and one of my closest friends, that, uh, the guy that uh, I met at the age of two. Anyway, him and I probably weren't the greatest students together, but um, we collected all of those books and stuff and we brought it home. And because I have younger a younger brother, yeah. um, over the summertime, you know, I tried to hit, sit him and some of his friends down and, you know, just kind of give them lessons. I felt like there was something connected to it. I felt like I would help them do better, whatever it was. I enjoyed that part. But ironically, in fifth grade and second grade and, se and in seventh grade, I was left back. I ended up going to um, wow. summer school to make it up. You know, my mom pushed me to make sure you do that. But at the end of the day, you know, I wasn't a great student. It wasn't until I was graduating from high school um, and <laughs> I had to, you know, this is the point where for me, I was like, I can't wait to leave. I'm done. <laughs> school is done. I'm good. I'm keeping it moving. I loved football at that time. Football was probably the one thing that I did pretty well in, but my grades weren't that great. Yeah. And so my mom kind of kicked in. And um, she's, she's a whole nother force. That's another conversation for another day. But she kicked in and was like, bro, you got to do something. You, <laughs> you're, not, you're not just leaving high school and that's that. And so she would take me around to certain schools and I would apply for different programs. He had programs, which are like programs that are offered to students who have potential, but they just didn't have the grades or they may be economically disadvantaged. And that was me. That was my family. And so she um, connected me with the program. Uh, called uh, NOAA program at Hofstra University, where my life changed. Um, in that space, I learned to love myself. I learned to, um, I learned to uh, become more connected with what my overall purpose in life was. Um, I learned to uh, pay more attention to the things uh, that made more sense in life. Yeah. And because of that, I was able to take education a little more easier, I'm a little bit more seriously. And through education, I was also able to uh, find, you know, at that time in my life, some of the things that um, really were connected to what I was about inside as opposed to outside. See, a lot of us grow up, you know, looking at things that we like on the outside, saying, I want to do that, I want to do that, I want to be that, and don't know what it takes to get there. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, the bottom line is everyone's journey is a little different. You know, the shell may look the same. The end, in it, the, the end point destination is right. But at the end of the day, um, every, the way you get there is a little different. And so for me, um, I learned, because I've learned those things, I learned to love myself. I realized that there's value in making sure that you're able to connect with people to um, help them understand what they're about. Because when they understand what they're about, then they understand their purpose. When you understand your purpose, when you're pushing uh, for whatever your goals are, you know, you, you actually have a drive. And that's what I didn't have when I was in high school. But when I got to college, that changed. And so, um, and, and I'll, I'll sum all of this up by saying, um, in college, I played a little football, but then I jumped back into the acting space where I reconnected with my boy, <laughs> Tobias. Um, but in school, my major was psychology and a minor in um, academic stu uh, 
Africana studies, yeah. you know, because I needed that to ground me. I needed to be grounded on the inside because I saw the kind of fruits I was able to bring in once I grounded myself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and also while I was at the university, I, was also, I also had a chance to participate in, you know, just some of the school events. Um, I was able to connect with some major, you know, producers like uh, Dame Dash and Chris Lighty. You guys don't know who that is, but, you know, Public <laughs> Enemy. And we were bringing a lot of different performers and acts. And I, I was kind of into that part, too. So yeah. it was like education. It was like, you know, entertainment yeah. <laughs> and just trying to figure it all out because those I was in both of those spaces. And I, and, and, and I have a lot of creative energy. And so um, I ended up uh, once I graduated with my B.A. in psychology, um, I connected with another one of my boys from where I grew up. And him and I both talked about going back to school. And at the time, it was for school counseling. And I was like, why not? You know, why not go and get my master's? You know, I remember what it was to be in school and what those kind of people meant to people like me. So why not do that? And so went back and got my school counselor, my master's in school counselor. Uh, Eventually, I, you know, graduated and picked up a a very nice job in uh, Long Island, New York, where... You know, I began my career as an educator. So, um, so yeah, so here, I, so that, that's what I did. That's how I was able to get into uh, the educational uh, degree, the master's degree in education. Yeah, you already gave us a hashtag, I'm too, sorry. by the way. It was, was you that? know, pay attention to your path. <laughs> you have no to doubt. pay attention on your path. <laughs> you have to pay attention to the things going on. Mm-hmm. You talked about many mentors um, yes. that were influencers in your life. Mm-hmm. Of course, you say your mom. Who else would you say that was, a, was someone you looked up to um, in this industry? Or <sighs> Okay. Um, like names. Like, yeah, 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 and yeah. And once you identify them as a I'm, mentor, what did you I'm do? going to say this. You know, usually when you're looking for mentors, right, yeah. um, you, it's always in someone older. Um, but for me, a lot of or people who have influenced you or influences that you look for, they're usually older people. For me, it was more of some of my peers. Wow. And, and I've learned that um, not everything... Not everything that you receive from people is going to be for you, but there are going to be certain things that you can pull from them. It's kind of like just eating the meat and spitting out the bones and fat. You don't need that. <laughs> um, so I, I, would, I would definitely say initially would, would have been Mr. Uh, Director Carl Clay, who was the production, uh, who just ran the whole production at um, Black Spectrum Theater in Queens. Um, then I would lead, lead over into uh, Frank William Smith, who was the dean and director of the NOAA program at Hofstra University, who kind of helped mold my emotional connection. Uh, as we're rolling closer into the industry, right now you have Mr. B.K. Fulton. Um, he uh, runs uh, Solidify. You know, he's the president over there. Um, he's uh, an amazing uh, uh, you know, person to look up to and to communicate with when it comes to understanding the business. Uh, you also have Mr. Monty Ross that that I pay a lot of attention to. Yeah. That you know we speak frequently, um, you know throughout our th- throughout the years. Well, throughout the re- years recently, he, we recently connected. He's the um, he is one of the co-founders of Forty Acres in the Mule with Spike Lee. Yeah. Um, he's also a producer now currently. Um, he's he's one of my mentors that I connect with from time to time. And then lastly, but least last but not least for sure is um, I would have to say the mentor in my head is, is Charles King. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> Charles King is, I don't know, you're familiar with Charles King, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, he, uh, you know, he, he's the uh, president over there at Macro Ventures, um, and I've, I've watched him over the years and uh, watched him grow and, and, and leave as a talent agent from uh, WME and eventually form Macro uh, and then, of course, I saw him build his team. He didn't know I was watching him, but I was watching him. Again, I kept saying, I'm saying mention in my head. Uh, we communicate um, mainly through email, but he's extremely supportive. And that, and that was a thing for me. And that, that, that resonates with me a lot because it really gets busy in this business, especially yeah. when you're doing something for the first time and you're carving out a space and there's really no blueprint. So you're, you're taking the steps to get to where you need to go. And so 
I used to always look at people and say, man, you know, after they get into a certain space, they just don't talk to people. But when I look at what the steps that I have to go through when it comes to the Talent Connect <clears throat> and the, the role that we play in the industry and, and the positioning that we have taken, there's a lot of things that we're doing for the first time. And so I know what that means. And so for a person like, you know, Charles King, who is spearheading um, this initiative through such a huge and impactful agency, you know, to uh, produce, uh, you know, film, to produce television shows, to uh, now that they also have a management, you know, lane. And, you know, that I just, you know, I admire that. <clears throat> and so, I, you know, every once in a while, we, you know, I connect with him and, um, you know, he drops some gems and I'm like, I'm good for a whole year. <laughs> no, not for a whole year, but I'm good for a little while. So, no, yeah, I, uh, so those would be some of the uh, mentors. And, and, so, and some, there are a lot of powerful women out there as well. Um, I that have it. been. I'm joking. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, listen. Uh, actually, it's interesting. Uh, some may even be met, um, clients, like Tracy Baker Simmons, who's the creator of Being Bobby Brown. You know, uh, which is the she's a pioneer in the business. Um, she's uh, they created the first celebrity reality television show, and it happened to have Bobby Brown, <laughs> uh, uh, Whitney Houston, Bobby Christina. You know, and it, those are huge talents um, and they create this whole concept of following, you know, the lives of these major mega st stars and kind of gave people the reality of, what you know, it's like. what it's like. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So, um, but folks like her, you know, I pay attention, you know, to, uh, you know, to, to folks who kind of spearhead or, or are the trailblazers because, you um, I know that that's something that we are kind of that we're doing in our space, mm -hmm. and um, my you know, my approach may not be the same, but I pay attention to a lot of how they've worked their way through some of the uh, trial and error that they had to do. So yeah, yeah. and so you kind of talked on some of those practical steps that mm -hmm. some of the students can take. Yes. So if they are looking to become a talent manager, mm -hmm. like a very practical step. What are what are three? steps you would say. Of course, studying some of the works and actions of the talent manager you aspire to be like, but also you talked about leveraging your peer group, right? Yes. A lot of people get into the industry and they're just like, who can pull me up? Who can pull me up? And they're missing out on the beauty of having that community and network. But what are some other practical steps? Maybe some workshops or classes yeah. that somebody who's looking to be a talent, talent manager, manager would go sure. to? Sure. Um, you, you just mentioned something though about network. Your network is probably one of the most valuable assets that you can have. Yeah. Um, a lot of what I do as a talent manager is through facilitating. I may understand what uh, talent agents do. I may understand what PR does. I may understand what marketing does. I understand all those things. And if I need to push in in certain, some of those spaces, I can. Yeah. But, you know, we are, uh, talent managers are macro advisors. We, we macro advise pretty much everything that's going on with the talent. So a lot of times we may be involved in helping to secure a talent agent or, or a photographer or a PR person. And we just kind of, you know, help facilitate that process. Um, to answer your question, what, what do people need to do? Um, I would say to, to be bigger than your pursuit. Okay. Um, if you want to be a talent manager, um, I would say to understand uh, you know, perfect a particular area of the of the industry first, <laughs> yep. right? And then, um, you know, become versed in everything if you can, because that's what it really takes. You have to understand what's happening in every um, in every circuit. You have to understand what's happening in front of the screen. You have to understand what's happening in the back of the screen. You have to understand why it's important. You have to understand yep. charting someone's path, you know, where they are, you know, uh, for me, as a school counselor, it was easy for me to transition into this space mm -hmm. because they're pretty much, they run hand in hand, yeah. right? Yeah. As a guidance counselor, you, you have a child who is uh, eventually trying to get somewhere into, you know, in a career one day in their life. Yeah. And uh, you identify it with them and you help them chart the steps to get there. It's the same thing as a talent manager. You know, you identify where the talent is. You see where they'd like to go and you guys talk or advise a way to eventually get there. Yeah. And, um, you know, and so what I would suggest to anyone is uh, for sure, um, if you if if you are 
someone that is a production person, fly in that space. If you are a director or if you are a talent agent, you know, you, you, uh, you would need to take on something and let that become your strength. And then you pull from every other area to help build it out. Every talent manager has a, a, an array of understanding of the business, but there is something yeah. that they're strong in. And so I would suggest that. I would say, yeah, and, and just be big, bigger than your pursuit. If you want to be an actor, you know, okay, go, go for acting, but understand production. Yeah. You know, understand being a director. Understand what all of the different parts of the game is because that's only going to help you as an actor because now you know when you're sitting in that room, you know what that producer is looking for. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. if you're rambling too much, like even myself, I'll be, I'll be back there right now, chopping myself, oh, just too much, you, <laughs> you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm probably rambling too much, you know what I'm saying? So my thing is you, you have to understand, you have to understand the entire, um, uh, you know, what's needed in every different realm. Yeah. And, um, when you do that, I think that's when you can, you know, lead into that space. You can also take business classes. I'm sorry. Um, I would, I would also say if you're a person that's going through school, yep. traditionally, definitely, you know, work through a BA program or a BS program, a bachelor's of science in business, yep. a huge part, you know, understand finances, understand budgeting, understand the legal aspect of things. Um, you don't need these degrees. You, you definitely don't. However, it's very helpful. Um, MBA program, yep. you know, uh, those credentials actually help legitimize you. You know, so um, I would suggest all of those different things. Uh, follow people who are in those spaces, yeah. you know, look at where they are and, um, you know, see how they got there. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get there the same way, yeah. but pay attention to those things. You know, um, yeah, that's what I would suggest. And I know a lot of people when they're looking um, or, or they find themselves looking for a talent manager. Right. I hear multiple times you should never look for management. You should be focused on your craft. Management is going to come and find you. Do you agree with that statement or what's your vibe? <laughs> People are going to think I'm, I'm nuts. You don't you don't need a manager. You don't need a manager. Uh, agents are definitely important yeah. because they are part of, you know, the, the submission aspect of it. Um, over time, you can, you know, manage. Managers are helpful. Don't get me wrong. Managers, uh, managers are a critical part of helping you move forward. You yeah. know, especially if you're someone that does not really understand what it takes in order to make it out there. I was about to say, when yeah. You, everybody's yeah. like, you go a wink, you get booked. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, what? That would be nice. I wish I could say that. <laughs> um, but what I will say, what I will say is, um, so they're essential. Don't get me wrong. They're an, they're an essential part. Um, and the truth is, I, I happen to work with some real amazing talent. And but the bottom line is their talent speaks for themselves. Wow. You know, wow. it speaks for themselves. And, and, and what I do is I just I'm just a part of helping to facilitate that process. Yeah. You know, uh, there's sometimes you may have to go through some packaging. Sometimes you have to look at different things that may need to shift. But at the end of the day, they, they are the independent contractors that are killing the game. And so to your point, yes, focus on your craft. If you are pursuing, if your pursuit is to just find a manager, you know, or a talent agent or a representative, yeah. you know, then you're not doing anything to build yourself. You know, talent managers, talent agents or reps in general, they're looking for, this is a business. So they're looking for people that they can sell. Yeah. <laughs> We get paid based on you booking, you yeah. know? So if you're coming talking about, hey, you know, let's, let's do this representation thing, you know, but you're not, you don't have anything to present, mm -hmm. you know, there's not much I can really do. However, that's good. That's good. yeah, but however, you know, there are things that you can do to develop yourself, you know, yeah. you can, uh, you know, take classes, you can do workshops. Right now, what's huge is on camera training. Yeah. Everyone's booking on camera now. That was totally different, especially when I was when I was pursuing things. I don't even think you saw a camera. It was just you walking up in there, shaking hands with producers and directors, and hoping you know they'll come back and, and call you back again, and you have to travel again. But uh, no, the game is different now. Yeah. You know, we should be focusing. Everyone should be focusing on the essential tools of today, yeah. which should be 
uh, on camera training, you know, um, you know, being in a gym, you know, doing workshops. Uh, when I say being in a gym, I'm talking about always working out, kind of like a boxer, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're never going to find a, a successful boxer who was great but then stopped training because they were great. And, they, and they're still winning fights. No, that doesn't happen. You get knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's real because there's a lot of competition out here. People are hungry. Yeah. They're hungry, you know. And so you have to have the pedigree to uh, really want this thing, you know. And it has to be bigger than I just want a book. It has to be, you know, this is where I belong. This is who I am, you know. And I know, regardless of who tells me no, that I'm a yes. And you have to go into those rooms every single time with that same feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's that's where I would go with that. How do you navigate no's, especially like if there's a, a talent or someone who you you really want to manage and you're like they tell you no. Like, how do you navigate those no's? What? How do you motivate yourself to to bounce back and be like, okay, I'll I'll go to the next person or I'll try this again, different timing. That's where I try to encourage people to pay more attention to um, themselves. It's, it's important for you to be grounded. Yeah. You know, you have to understand why you're doing this. Yeah. You know, if you're doing it because you saw somebody else doing it and they look nice on TV and it's real dope to have people watching you from home on TV <laughs> and you going on red carpets, when, when, when that happens, you're, you don't have the right focus. And so you burn out much faster than someone that says, hey, I woke up one morning and I felt like I can express myself through my art. You know, I felt like this thing is therapeutic. You know, I felt like regardless of whether I'm talking to an audience of one million people or zero, I feel like I just did an amazing art piece. Mm -hmm. I could put that on the wall and I'll cherish it for the rest of my life. And if that's your feeling about being a talent, it don't matter what these <laughs> casting directors say. It don't matter what these producers say. Now don't get me wrong. You gotta make money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna do that for your whole life. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna be an actor that just, I'm, I'm able to handle those. Nah, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But you have to, Equip yourself. You have to prepare yourself in a way where uh, those no's don't kill your spirit. You have to find ways to justify. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and the yes and no's um, can't be things that you allow to sit within your soul. Yeah. Uh, notice I said yes and no's. Yeah. Because sometimes someone will hear a yes and they think, oh, I'm a superstar. Yeah. And that's the wrong attitude, don't too. Raise the price and everything. <laughs> Acknowledge it. Yeah. Acknowledge the nose. You know, sometimes those nose are real. You know, hey, you know what? I, I need to pick up on this. Pay attention to the notes. Casting directors, they they want to make sure they, they are impressed when they give a note and they call a talent back mm -hmm. and the talent follow through on that note. You know, they they they're, you know, when I say notes, they're asking for you to make certain adjustments with what you're doing. Yeah. And you follow through and you do that. And the next time you come in and you show that, you know, that pushes you up on a notch. You know, so so the other part of your question, right, yeah. <laughs> was uh, how do I handle uh, how do I handle being rejected by town? Yeah. Interesting that you say that. Um, and I thank you for that. These, first of all, <laughs> amazing questions, because no one's ever asked me this stuff before. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hmm, how do you handle that? So it's interesting because um, I think talent managers and talent agents, they're sought after a lot. Yeah. You know, so I spend more energy um, trying to be uh, constructive and trying to, you know, and, and helping people to navigate through this industry, uh, you know, on a mass message um, without, like, making them feel like they haven't made it. Because what happens is, you know, a lot of people want representation, you know. They think that that's what it is. And a lot of times that's not it. You know, we already talked about it. Yeah. It's, it's your talent speaks for itself. Your talent and the evidence that you produce, uh, you know, it it 
makes talent reps want you. And yeah. so you approach people. So I spend more time letting people down. And I don't like to say letting down. I like to just say, you know, advising them to, you know, hey, what you need to do in order to, you know, before you decide to pursue agents or managers. Yeah. Um, but for, for uh, there are times where I am interested in talent. And it's, it's rare that it's a, the, the conversation never really opens up, hey, I want to represent you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, the conversation usually is, hey, you know, well, we, can, we know what's going on because you can see who represents them. You know, there's a lot of public data that's out there. If that doesn't, you know, because you never want to step on anyone's shoes. Yeah. You Talk know? about it. <laughs> yeah, you never want to step on anyone's shoes. And, that, and that's, a, that's a golden rule. Unwritten you know, etiquette. Yeah. For being you know, not everybody does it, but you know, I try to stick to those things. There's, there's a lot of mud, a lot of puddles you can step into, and I, I try to, you know, the things that I know that I should never touch on, I don't. Um, but for, you know, but you will have some folks that are maybe transitioning, maybe their contracts are up, um, you know, and but they're doing their thing, you know, and you see that they may have something that you don't have on your roster, and it's like, oh, That'll fit nice. Mm. I get these breakdowns, you know. So in my, in my business, and what we do is we get these breakdowns that really break down different types of characters. And there's a load of talent that we don't have. Yeah. Um, and so those are some of the folks that I'm paying attention to. Whether they have great credits or not, you know, they just need to show that ability. Uh, because sometimes the folks that have great credits, it's easy to pitch them because they there's a catalog of things that you can just look hey, at and see. Boom, here's a package, set it off. <laughs> you know, and, of you right, just exactly. <laughs> um, but then you have folks that are the bomb talent, you yeah. know, because you don't have to have all of these credits. You know, these are the folks that you need to just develop. But they're so bad that you, you want bad meaning good. Yeah. Not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show up on top of my arrow, man. Run DMC. No. <laughs> I mean, we can start the beat yeah, right? Um, but those that's the talent you want to build out. Those are the, that's the talent that you want to um, develop over time. And so I, I do have some of those. It's not a huge percentage yeah. of my roster load. Um, but let me get to your answer. See, I, I ramble a lot. I gotta gotta get back to that. No, you were dropping gems. I mean, um, if somebody's thinking about going into talent management, clearly right. they need to be able yeah. to have a portfolio yes. to even be able to identify those gaps it's in helpful. talent that they, it's helpful. that they don't have. And deadlines, because contracts, yes. you mentioned like knowing when their contract is up. So mm -hmm. they need to have a certain skill in time management yes i know there's somebody who's watching who's been here in time management but it works as an educator i love this whole process <laughs> no for real talk um how have i handled no's yeah. i i think that you know i it, i've learned even since the time that i was out as an actor that it's not about me personally mm, that's good you know it's about uh, what's right for the person and on top of that if they don't want to be there you don't want to have them because mm -hmm. that trust factor is important you know this is a relationship it's a partnership yeah. you know the talent that you're working with the rep that you have you guys should be working together you're building together mm -hmm. so for me when I see that it's okay but I'm still a fan, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, and and that's the and, and, and that's the thing. I, I remember how I was saying you should. It's important to learn how to acknowledge the yeses. I'm sorry, acknowledge the noes, uh, acknowledge the yeses, but be separate from them yeah. because that doesn't make you. Those are just different steps that you hit along the way. You know, mm -hmm. some of them are going to be hurdles. Some of them are going to be platforms for you to fly on. But at the end of the day, that's not you. That, that's just what happened in your process. Yeah. You're still this vessel moving through your journey. So uh, when it comes to no's, you know, I just look at it as cool, you know. Um, but on the flip side, I do want to say this. Um, and, and I guess we, this is I guess this is a theme, right? Your pursuit should really never be a. Your pursuit should never be to uh, find a talent agent or just to find a manager. It should be how do I present the evidence? How do I show the evidence? Yeah. Tracy Twinkie Bird says that she's a casting director out of LA. How 
present the evidence. You know, <laughs> I love her. She's she's a, she's great. Um, but it's the truth. Present the evidence uh, and do it in a way in which you know it's it's not over. It's it's, it's tough. It's a, you have to use discretion, right? Yeah. Uh, because you never want to be overbearing because that's too much. Because you know, folks are busy. But you never want to be so far off you forgot. where <laughs> they can't see you. Yeah. And so what I encourage people to do is to, hey, let's stay in touch. You know, we have a, a an, an email database that, you know, I'd like to, you know, keep me posted. You know, send me your stuff. You know, start building your portfolio. Show me your training. You know, stuff like that. Um, so that's. I bring that up because I think it's important for people to focus more on, um, you know, with the no's. It's not really a no personally. It's just no because it's not right at the time with that particular person. Right. Might be right for somebody else. Yeah. You know, so that's what I say about the no's. Is there a talent, if you could say one, mm -hmm. that you're like, this is somebody who I talent connect. We we need like we. Ooh. Or if you can't say it, if you can't, we can um, go to the next person. Always Man, like to I have to you know say, I mean? there's a lot of super talented people out there, but yeah. the super talented people are usually locked up. Yeah. You see, the, the those, you know, they're, you know, I have a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll keep it real. You have a lot of them. So they're already <laughs> locked up. And locked up meaning they, they have representation, yeah. you know? So uh, anybody you're like I would love to work with or even just have oh, man. a conversation. Um, yeah, sure, sure. I there's a young man by the name of Ch Chase Dillion. Uh, he's actually one of the uh, young performing actors in, um, in the Underground Railroad, which is an Amazon Prime production. Actually, just released two days ago. Uh, and I, I got wind of him because of one of my other clients, Eli Everett, who plays one of the uh, major characters in, uh, in, in the first episode. Yeah. Um, and I, I met this young man, and it's so interesting because what I appreciated about him as a young talent, this is for any, especially kids that are out there, was that he was just so personable. <laughs> he was just so bright and open. Yeah. He was so, it didn't, it wasn't about the acting as much as it was about him as a person, you know? And he tells me that he's coachable. He tells me that he's willing to uh, to push himself. Yeah. You know, he's he's willing to take notes. Um, that he didn't say that, but I picked all of that up from that conversation. Yep. And then, of course, I saw him perform, and I was just like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> you know. Um, so he he would be one. There's another young man that that uh, uh, kid actually that I'm interested in, and uh, I'll say. He is uh, Jaden Smith. <laughs> Come on now. now Manifesting yeah, on that. Well, Jaden Smith, not Jaden Smith and Will Smith's son, but it's another young actor who is um, out of New York. And, um, you know, he's in, he's, I think he's going to be in a production with, um, I think, Holly Berry. But I had a chance to, to watch him, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, move on and grow up and develop. And, you know, it'll... The kid space is really a good space because you get a chance to build or to help change certain things. You're not locked in. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, and again, I'm going to go because my experience in life is so much out the box. Right. Yeah. I'm this guidance counselor that is also a talent manager, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and an entrepreneur. So I relate a lot of these things. A lot of these things are overlapping. So I look at these child actors the same way I look at middle school kids who mm -hmm. haven't been through so so much that it's hard to help change some of the things that they're already involved in. They still have a foundation to build yeah. and you're a part of that. You know, so I feel I throw out two names. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two kid names. I take them, I take them, we'll take them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, mean they, look there, there's a lot of folks that I would I would definitely enjoy working with. Um, uh, but I, you know, it, it's also something that has to make sense. Yeah. I've received some pretty nice interest from some amazing folks 
that I decided that I could not take on um, mm. because I knew what I'm ca- I know what I'm capable of doing. Yeah. I know what I can do for certain people. And so at times I may not take somebody because of that. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I would love to have you, but I, I probably can't do anything for you. <laughs> I can do something for you, you know? And so I would do those kind of things. You yeah. Know? You have to be honest. And I think, um, I think, that, that integrity is extremely important, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you talked about it, right? Having that network yes. as, as a talent manager, being mm-hmm. able to connect people with the right networks mm-hmm. or the right partnerships and opportunities that Absolutely. come up. So I, I would be crazy not to, to end or ask before we end mm-hmm. about Talent Connect. Yes. How, where did that come from? Woo! What's the spearhead? Where can people follow Talent Connect? Yes. Um, if they're looking to get involved. Um, the Talent Connect is an entertainment service hub. Okay. Um, you know, we are mainly known for the talent management that we do, yep. um, but that's just one of the lanes. We are also a production company. Um, prior to the pandemic, we were uh, jet set to launch our Speaker Bureau, okay. which is um, a platform for universities and schools across the nation or abroad you know, to identify different um, speakers to come and talk Mm -hmm. to the group of people that they would like for them to talk to. Um, And the, the, the platform really was going to house, of course, talent, you know, (laughs) why not put those major names, amazing (laughs) folks on there. Um, And uh, not just talent that I represent, but talent, you know, from across uh, other agencies you know because it's not that's not the management side yeah you know that's the um you know the speaker bureau side and uh but also it was really to showcase you know some of the folks behind the scenes you know the stars behind the stars you know uh you you can't become an a-list actor without that a-list um attorney yeah right (laughs) yeah or that a-list agent or manager right yeah um you know, or those uh, executive producers or writers, you know, so it, it, it's, it's still on the way. We just had to adjust the, the process because we're living in the COVID space right now. Yes, <laughs> so <are>. that's a <laughs> little different. But that's one of the other lanes. Uh, and more recently, we launched our store in which, uh, you know, is something I'm extremely excited about. And I really appreciate a lot of the support that we've been receiving. The Talent Connect we're an entertainment service hub that really focuses on the social emotional um, aspect of talent that's out there. Yeah. It's, this is not an easy um, industry. Yeah. You have to have thick skin. And so we pay a lot of attention to um, ways in which we can inform, we can offer uh, our followers you know, resources that will help them build themselves as talent, uh, not just as you know, an actor, but just as a person, yeah. you know, so a lot of our uh, apparel and merchandise that we put out really is aligned with that. You know, we have uh, stuff like uh, growth minds, you know, shirts that say growth mindset or. Oh, so we're going to get some shirts? Oh. So you brought one for me. Shirts for everybody. I'm a small. I'm a small. I'm <laughs> you <saying>. know, always <laughs> connected. Talent speaks for itself. You know, a lot of our messaging really is to help empower you know, uh, folks that really need it. You need to be strengthened from the inside out in order to make it in this industry. And I know a lot of the DMs and a lot of the messaging that we receive really speaks towards, you know, these people can benefit from this. You know, so let's put that out and and help. Hopefully it serves as a symbol to help them push forward. And then we also have another line where, um, you know, we're really... You know, folks want to do things in life. I want to be a director. I want to be a producer. Or oh, I am a producer. Or oh, I'm a casting director. You know, so we have a uh, we have Title Gear. Yeah. Title Gear really does identify that for you. It's just a you know red label shirt with who you are. So right now you might have a host shirt or yeah. what is it that you do again? Uh, technology. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, not to interview, but you know we just try to. Uh, Help people identify themselves and feel powered, empowered from within. Yeah, you know, through some of the apparel that we offer. So I love it. Um, yeah, I got two questions. Yes, and I know, I know they so own me. Good. They own me. Get me, get, I, I, get me. I, I got to ask them. Woo. First, we brought you on past. You are at a desk right now. Yeah, old school plans. I, I don't even know if the students watching this 
know what this is. Because I know they just, you know, they move up, they move down and stand it. What was the one favorite item that you had up in your desk that you was like either sneaking or, or you, you could have it? All right. What was it? I'm about to call out my age. First of all, we didn't have phones. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have had a pager that I wasn't supposed to have. <laughs> Uh, not because I was a dealer or anything like that, but because it was just cool to have, you know? You know, I had to be cool, right? You know, so I got the page under here. Um, it's funny. I, I got to tell you, I sat down here and it took me back. I feel like, man, I'm thinking, man, am I going to get gum stuck on my, my leg here? So for, for, for those of you that don't know, you know, that's the, the major spot for gum that you're done with is on the bottom of your desk. <laughs> So, you know, I used to get gum stuck on my pants. Uh, man, I mean, we had all different types of books inside. It, can, I was going to turn it so people could see. But anyway, um, <laughs> what was the thing that I had in there? Um, it be, maybe it candy. Be, candy. Maybe, yeah, maybe a little pretzel, you know. With your people, your pages. Yeah, the page, but see, the pager, it was interesting because if you put it in there, this thing makes noise, I know. right? So if you're a busy person, which I wasn't, but I like to, I, I wanted to pretend like I was. <laughs> you know, I used to sit mine in there, but you could tell who was who really was busy and who yeah. wasn't, because mine used to sit there like, yeah, look what I got here. You know, <laughs> but those who were really getting pages, you know, it would be like, and it amplifies it. So um, I, I, uh, but I would say like candy and yeah. stuff like that. And then last but not least, yes. wink. Yes, Where did it come from? <laughs> wink. Yes. Were you always winking at people? Uh, he was in the mall actually, doing a wink. Uh, so I'll share what, what, what this is. Um, wink is a, is a personal, um, actually, winky is really what it is. Winky. <laughs> winky, <laughs> yeah. W I N K. He might have spelled it Y, but it is from my father. And it's, it's weird because it was because I never blinked as a kid. Sounds weird, right? But also, when you look at how certain people get names like big and they're really small, right? Yeah. Or tiny when they're like huge, it makes sense, yeah. right? So you kind of call the person the opposite. So my father gave me that. How did it make its way into the industry? My actual full name is Ronald Samuel Woodall. Okay. Um, Wink really came about in the industry because, again, you know, I, I have. I'm, my professional life is in different areas, okay? Education, uh, entertainment, but also the personal side is in there as well. And so a lot of times they overlap. You know, yeah. if I'm going to a concert and I'm working with someone who's a major producer or with a director that I might have known as a kid who someone told me different, you know, it's wake, what's good? And so I had to bite it. I'm just like, you know, I just got, I have to go with this because people are asking. Well, who's Wink? You know, <laughs> I thought you were Ronald. You know, so it's like, all right. You know, and, and the other part too, Wink uh, actually took uh, front and center because it was different than Ronald. You know, you may have some other Ronalds out there, but I don't, I don't know how many Winks you have out there. So um, it just became that, you know, so it's Wink Woodall, but um, my, my actual name is Ronald. Yeah, Love my mom's it. name is Ronald. Love yeah. it. If you could look at the camera for us and tell a past student who is looking at becoming a talent manager, almost like one of those one-liners, tweetable, Facebookable statements. Absolutely. What would be that that one word of encouragement? Motivation? If they want to become a talent manager, yes. I, I actually prepared for. Can I just pull yes, out some can. notes? Yes, you can. I prepared for this part, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't take long. No, it's great. You can follow me I, while, I, you're, while you're doing it. I'm, <laughs> I'm interested. I, I'm always interested in. Yeah. You know, underneath everything that you do, there's always a core space. Yeah. And I really connect that to personal growth. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, because there's so many ways to become a talent manager. There is no one route. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you identify, uh, I'll say this yeah. to the camera. Uh -huh. If you are identifying a certain area in the industry, I think it's important for you to... Um, Go for it, but also pay attention to all the different, um, all of the different addresses along the way, because there are going to be certain things that really resonate with you. And while your journey is to head towards talent management, you may find that when you wrote that pass passage, 
you know, that ended up becoming a, a, a treatment and <laughs> ended up eventually making it into, um, you know, Lifetime Network's, you know, writing room and then became a series. Then all of a sudden, you're no longer trying to become a talent manager. You're going to tap into that energy. And so, but if you're not able to, uh, if, if you don't pay attention to these things along the way, you can miss them. And so I would say, um, go for the talent management, you know, take the business. I think business is extremely important. Um, that has been a curve that I had to conquer over time uh, because it just wasn't a part of my path. Uh, it's important to understand budgeting. It's important to understand the legal aspect of things. It's important to understand production uh, and what's, you know, uh, pre-production uh, and post-production uh, you have to understand so many different elements of the game that I would say lock into one and yeah. then just kind of feed the others along the way. Uh, again, you know, most managers uh, usually start off in some other space, you know, uh, maybe some actor that's been well versed and understands that or a producer or a talent agent. Um, but you should have some understanding of the game. I mean, you also have other managers that don't really Put themselves in any of those spaces you know you, you know manager again there's, there's really it's just a title <laughs> you know what you do is what makes you you understand what i'm saying you have some parents that are out there that are managers those are called momagers actually you have a t-shirt i have a t-shirt for you if you like that <laughs> no but uh and they're great too because they offer that support that their children need but you know um there are different ways to get to the management space is what i'm saying so uh but there there is something that i did yes. want to say um that i think there are just certain things that I wanted to put in here, certain points that I didn't make. You know, everyone's journey is a little different. Um, be a lifelong learner. You know, I'm an educator first. Um, I didn't venture into management and then understood that when I do the talent management, I needed another kind of platform to make it one of the streams. And so I became an entrepreneur. You know, um, seek foundation and purpose in everything that you do. Yeah. It's not easy, but it's essential. And it helps you keep yourself. Uh, tune into yourself. You know, it supports your foundation. Pay attention to the foreshadows and trends in your life. You know, uh, me growing up has been a real interesting process. But if I didn't pay attention to some of the things that I was really into or that really made sense for me, you know, I'd probably just be sitting in one particular space, you know, not realizing that I could have flew outside of the box like I feel I'm doing right now. You know, so, um, yeah, pay attention to those things. Um, two more things. <laughs> you know, you may find, um, you may find the most precious fruits <clears throat> in your greatest pain. I, I'm a spiritually connected person and I feel like God puts us in positions to either allow us to either build or break ourselves. And sometimes those no's may be the worst things in the world. Look, I've, I've watched talent go so far down the line in some major stuff. And at the end of the day, nope, went a different way, you know, and, and you know, if they don't have this thing to say, hey, w what does this mean for me? Then they're in trouble, you know? And, and sometimes what happens though is that when you are hit with one of those situations, it opens up room for something else amazing to happen. And so I say all those things to you. I say that um, <clears throat> become grounded, you know, uh, and make it a pursuit. You know, every day I'm still working on myself. <laughs> Seriously, you know, everyone's got somewhere to be. Don't ever think that uh, because someone is in a certain place you'd like to be that they're done. You know, and if they tell you that, then they're, they're telling you a story or they could be done and that's all they're going to go. That's, that's as far as they're going to go. But if you are really interested in uh, becoming all that you can be, you want to absorb the, the understanding that uh, there's always a next level that I have to push for. Yeah. And, uh, and everybody uh, has that. So um, wish you guys the best. <laughs> that was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You didn't even need me for this interview. That mm -hmm. that that that, that just it. gave me the little chills. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I am so excited, and 
uh, grateful that we had the opportunity to have you on Paths. There you have it, Paths, y'all. This is Ronald Wink. I learned how to wink just for you. Wink, <laughs> Ronald. I do like it. No. <laughs> you know, I just learned it. I just learned it. I'm still blinking twice, probably on the camera. That's good. But Ronald Wink Woodell, I am so excited. I hope that someone on their path is is really moved and paying attention to this moment right here. So whether you're on the toilet, on the couch, on work from break, we hope that the words overflow um, from the camera into your space and, and really permeate it, your mind, your hearts, your bodies. I am your host, J.L. Benjamin, here on Paths, and we cannot wait to cross your path again. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome.